Een niche. Hi, John. Hey, Michael. So you'll be glad to know it only took me a couple of days to get over the whole time zone situation with <laughs> alarms and multiple alerts that it is actually now. Hey, Richard. Good morning. As I said the other day, Richard, I was seriously impressed with that T-shirt. I need, I need to find that online. I think it was swag from reInvent, I, I think, uh, like two years ago. So you can you can reach out. Uh, it's, oh, it's one of the big um, security vendors. I'll see yeah. if I can, I can hunt it down. Give me a second. They probably sell it still. It is a quality item. Was that? Who knew we could get fashion advice from the middle of a CNCF working group, right? <laughs> it's probably the least expected of all outputs from this group. <laughs> Did we scare everybody away with the talk about this? I wasn't sure whether it was sort of coming up to Easter and people taking time away or uh, whatever. It's, it's been fairly light in the ground with multiple different meetings and things. I haven't heard from Emily uh, or Anders, actually. I think they may be away. Yeah, Emily's on vacation. Yeah. I think she comes back next week. Yep. Give it a minute and then kick off. It's Blake. Hey, but like, Sorry. Blake, I hate all your rec recommendations, but I accepted them all. <laughs> I'm making <laughs> more. Kidding. They're all great. They're all fine. Uh, I'm editing something to be terser right now. Terser? Like it was. It was like really like you should. What about? I don't know. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not sure I can face going through pages 24 to 40 again today. I, I got to tell you, it's, <laughs> no, it's gonna, I, I, know. Lose it. I didn't make them all the way through yesterday. So you know, it's, it's I'm significantly literally... better. I was talking to Alex just, yeah, a, I'm still ago. It's, at parts. it's actually the, that first it's better. The introduction it's a, yeah. is way more concise. The yeah. build infrastructure we, we, decided, section... we decided the structure we even wanted. Finally, I think was a problem. We just, we, yeah. yeah. We started with yeah. that insane taxonomy that we ended up with <laughs> and, you, and came to it backwards. Um. Yep. Uh, right. So let me. Uh... Um. Is that you, Anonymous Crow? Hmm? Uh, adding, adding in more sentences, Blake? No. That you're typing? Uh, that might I mean, be I, I'm typing, but I was <laughs> not adding with deleting. I was editing existing sentences. Got it. Uh, okay. Uh, um. Got it. All right. So I'm looking back through some of the notes, and I know that um, uh, a number of you were uh, were good enough to to also go through uh, and and do a review. Um, it was certainly a, a group of us got together yesterday. Um, myself, Alex. Uh, Blake and Richard to, to go through pages 20 to 40 and do some pretty heavy um, uh, commentary and adjustments to that document, as we're saying, we're sort of getting uh, into shape. Is that Alex coming in? Excellent. Mm. Um, I think we still have some way to go on that piece, but uh, we'll see. Um, in, terms of, in terms of going through as a, in a, providing a single narrative, can I ask maybe uh, Rich, Marina, uh, I think Alex as well, was that really your intent as you went through it or is it more just editing it from top to bottom perspective? 
Um, at least for me, I think I, I mostly just went through and, and read the whole thing top to bottom. I made a couple of like minor like grammar like changes in line and then just listed kind of general inconsistencies I saw. But um, I wouldn't say it's like a full knit, like single narrative. Um, right. Approach. Rich. Oh, Marina. Sorry, I lost that. Oh, did we just lose Richard? I think we just lost Richard. OK, so we still need to do the, the single voice narrative. Um, in terms of areas of the document that are choppy, I, I, I think Blake, you, me, and, and Richard are probably uh, chewing on 20 to 40 still a little bit, let's face it. But um, what about the rest of the document? I, I guess from, from your review, uh, everyone else, are there comments that we need to add in? I note that from pages one to about 20, there are um, hardly any comments in there at the moment. Which is probably yeah, I'd say that uh, a couple, I think the biggest things we can do to get it kind of in shape is there's a lot of the risk assurance levels missing closer to the end of the document. Yeah. And then in the very last section, there are a couple of like section headers that don't have content filled in. I think those would be like the two biggest things to get this whole thing in order. And then there's a lot of little things as well, but yeah. Yep. Um, I think I added a chunk or at least created the suggested edits for, ah, oh, they might have been merged in actually, or deleted one of the two, or lost somewhere in between that. But so let's do that. Let's go in high, medium risk. We can certainly do that part of it. Um, the, the other bit that I, I, I kind of wanted to, to highlight was the actual recommendations that we've made and whether we actually agree to that as a group, because I think that's pretty fundamental, right? If we've got something here we disagree with or we're missing something, we should probably evidence it fairly promptly. Yeah. So it was actually, uh, hi, Magna. Welcome to the group. Um, Thank you. I think it was um, last week. Oh, the 22nd of March, I sent through a document and all it was supply chain recommendations RDF. And all I did was I just pulled out the recommendations, put them in as bullets, just so that we could sort of stand back a little bit and figure out, look, all things being equal, these are the actual recommendations we've made. Do we, do we actually agree with this or are the chunks we missed, right? Just wonder if we can spend like five minutes just reviewing that to see if we've actually missed something or we agree on it. And then we can add that into the paper and move on and then look at the high, medium and, and low recommendations at the bottom and then figure out any recommendations. Yeah. So if you, if you go back in Slack to like the um, 22nd of March, I'll also see what I can paste can it. Can you just reply to the thread? And that'll yeah. Be yeah, right yeah, let me do that. You know, it's not the prettiest oh, of formatting, yeah. but it gets there, right? Um, and this is literally just copied out of the headers, right? So if we start at the top, so, yeah, where's the top? One, I don't know. Do you want to individual items? To, sorry. Is it possible okay. for you to share the screen? Uh, yeah, I can share the screen too. Um, um, one thing that sort of here that I was not quite seeing where we have it is, do we recommend container scanning specifically anywhere? They're listed as tools at the very end and sort of mentioned indirectly a couple times throughout the document in different places. Uh, you know, what, dis probably dis done. distinct from SAST and DAST. Um, yep. I'm trying to figure out if that's a set. It overlaps with other things as a problem because it can perform can perform vulnerability scanning and can perform configuration scanning. But I was actually wanting to reference it from the uh, build pipeline steps later on that we're talking about. And no, I, mean, I think you're right. No, there's a Claire, Anchor, whatever. We list um, some tools at the very end of the document in a table, but I don't think. I think it deserves a first class possibly bullet point. It's automation mm -hmm. is probably where it belongs because that's where we have software scanning. Yeah, you're right. Like it, it overlaps with all these. The, the thing is, it's the tool that performs them is the problem. But otherwise. Oh, so I, I mean, have thoughts on this. Go ahead. Uh, sure, Anisha. 
Sure, yeah. Um, I've noticed that there are some things in the controlled environments section that, um, well, uh, maybe contradict with the containers section in the okay. appendix. Um, with regards to scanning, uh, I, I. That section so, got longer since you did this. It's right at the bottom yeah. of the document. That was what I had uh, said I'd do is put an appendix yep. at the bottom of the document and then yep. list out all the stuff over there. Um, now, uh, container scanning, because of the way containers are built, you know, is, is not something that someone can totally rely on. So I think Agreed. with regards to containers, um, we could, I would recommend, you know, taking the results with a grain of salt. I would never say it's an only option, but it, it's what you should use. You should use static source code scanning if you can, but there's mm -hmm. nothing to say you can't do the other one in addition. I, I'd use all three. Um, I'd do the, yeah. The SAS, um, and for example, yeah, what it mostly comes down to is when you're building from binaries, it's the only option you have frequently. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's defense in depth. Um, and that's what I was gonna try to say actually is, my recommendation might not be container scanning, it's perform configuration scanning and perform, I don't know, interest, not, not SBOM from source, but SBOM from what's actually installed. So it's not, if you could accomplish the same thing by other tools, it's not strictly container scanning is my recommendation, but it would be, Figure out what you actually have in your containers and figure out if your containers are configured correctly because that drives like that, vulnerability info. So yeah, you can write it on either side. Yeah, that, that can also overlap uh, as from the, the application layer, also, right? Like uh, it is a, uh, there will be some level of overlapping between the S bombs, but yeah, it will so, be a heuristic approach. Yeah. Yeah, all these overlap slightly. And I don't know if it's a problem or not. Yeah, it's like oh, we're great. not enforcing we're not enforcing anyone to use any of the, the kind of SAST and DAST solutions here, right? No. We're just uh, we're just providing some guidance and yes. okay, these are the ones that uh, if you want that these are the ones that are available, right? You yeah. can either do DAST, SAS, or you can do both, or you can also do container scanning, right? Mm -hmm. So right. I think that's right. that's a good what? approach. What drove me to recommend this is I was going to get to, I was working in the section of the build pipelines where we're saying build hardened images for your build pipeline. If you're not building from source, the only tool you have available is um, yeah. this type of scanning. And it won't hurt anything to do it in addition to it, to static analysis on your standard pipeline. Yep. So, yeah. yeah and, and there are, there are a, a lot of open source tools available for that. So we have a list at the end of the document already. Uh, so we, have we, that on the, we have that on the container security map as well. I think uh, not just for open source, but commercial tools. So yeah. what we're doing in the container security map is we're doing uh, CNCF tools, then open source tools, and then commercial mm -hmm. tools. So yeah. Yep. So let, let's add that in. I think that's a good shout. Perform. I mean, in terms of verbiage. Okay. Yeah. In contains... addition, or when it's the only option. Right. But yeah. Often only option. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, other thoughts? Anybody else? Uh, I have one with the, that uh, secure authentication. Right. There is a, a usage of PAT for a CI/CD pipeline, which is not really weighted against SSH to say that uh, you know that should go as a recommendation. Right. So if we can't put the pros and cons for both approach. I think mm -hmm. in my view, we shouldn't recommend, I mean, so, just blindly recommend one option, right? So, yeah. And also I there's think, an inconsistent, yeah, go ahead. I think what we got down to is we didn't care as much if you, as Pat, I mean, that text went back and forth a lot, but it was used unique credentials for pipelines, I think was the true requirement. I'm sorry, Vina, Vina, can you put your mute? I don't know what ice cream van you're next to or something, but. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I would be happy to. I think we're saying Pat still. I think perhaps relax it slightly to still say um, a unique credential for the pipeline. Not, not shared because that was what Pat implied. But if you do SSH with a unique cred, I think you're just as good. So, so yeah, I, th I think it's a decent one. Should we, should we state use unique credential and then as like a subcategory? No, I think we can or... drop the last one and turn it into that. I think that's we're having a discussion. We're arguing about the last one. Sorry, I had to call turn off my son's tablet. So uh, instead of just unique credential, I think we should men mention short-lived unique credential, right? Like that is important. Oh, so it is a, it, yeah. using a long-lived credential. Shared secrets are not good for a, yeah. any automation. Short-lived or even better is ephemeral. Ephemeral, yeah. 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 That's harder, but sorry, it is me this time. <laughs> Um, bum, 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 bum. And well, how, how, how do we cut this, right? I so use, have use to the drop for another meeting. I'm very sorry. No problem, Blake. So, so how, how do we cut this though, right? Use the short-lived credential and then effectively slightly adapt the, the usage of Pat to highlight that's an approach. Pat, Pat, it is complicated, John. Pat is not a standardized implementation across a different vendors. So. Yeah. Some yeah. So, so most of the vendors are doing a long-lived shared secret. It is just like an API key. It's, yeah. It, I, yeah. So yeah. All right. I'm just going to say that we need to add that one. Okay. Let's sort of move on in a bit. Is that all looking good? Verifying third-party artifacts and open source libraries, dependencies on libraries makes sense for high security. You know, makes sense. Vulnerabilities, management, licenses, composition analysis. This one jumped out a little bit, the controlled environments. It was kind of orphaned, orphaned in the automation piece, securing materials. When we come back to it. Yeah, maybe scratch it for t the time being, or let's color code it somehow. This one. Yeah, not enough there to warrant. Like, well, what does that mean, right? And I think there's there's a whole lot more controls and controlled environments. Right. They just, just optimize, use a container optimization strategy. This all looks so much more real once it's on a Microsoft Word editor. Uh, <laughs> just so you know, uh, and as what we're doing at the moment is just we pull. So we've, we've done huge amounts of editing, huge amounts of editing over the, the paper and such. What we've done here is pulled out the actual recommendations we're making to see if we actually believe the recommendations and see if there's any gaps. OK, awesome. Yep. We want to make sure that we actually believe in what we're saying at a, a high level, right? Oh, I have one a little bit up that I just um, yep. read. So the um, the building libraries from source section, yep. I feel like that could probably use, um, like build them from source or use reproducible um, libraries. Because I think if they're already re reproducible, it's a little bit redundant to have to build them yourself. Um, Basically, like I think the idea is to have some kind of verification, but I don't think that's the only way to have some kind of verification that the um, resulting artifact comes from the source code. Yeah, I think especially with the six store and everything, there is a possibility that you know no need to verify everything from the source, right? So, so is that? I mean, we've got um reproducible builds in here as well, but I mean, is that in the similar sort of section suggest that well? For high security environments, you can either build totally from source or rely upon a reproducible build. Yeah, exactly. Um, like I think in the real world right now, mostly you'll be building from source, but um, right. I think that's another option as as these things progress.
we can certainly reference it, right? Okay. Um, by the way, I'll, I'll run in and just add that, just putting people next to these things so that we actually have something to get on with it. Uh, Vino, do you want to take the ephemeral one? Yeah. From container scanning, who wants to take the, perform the container scanning one? I can do that. Thanks, Magno. Uh, and I'll just delete that. Okay. Right, so we had loads of verification as you'd expect on the secure build pipeline. I think we did this one to death. The, the first recommendation feels very ambiguous to me. I don't know if it's a headline to the rest. Well, the configuration security, we can probably tighten the language, right? Let's see what I'm going to look in the R8. Where is that? Securing build pipelines. Oops. Like third line item says cryptographically guaranteed policy adherence that feels much more concise. Yep. Just trying to find the uh, section. Uh, Alex, I think you're on mute. Are you talking? Yep, sorry. Sorry, I thought I had unmuted. Uh, looking at it in the doc, it looks that validate the configuration of security of the system after deployment recommendation looks pretty minimal as well. And yeah. I think it probably is mostly covered in the cryptographically guarantee one. So it might be a candidate for cutting. Yep, I'm fine with that. Any other takers just delete it? There's, there's one more, which is uh, validate environments and dependencies before using. Using what? Seems like a truncated sentence. Uh, that might have been me. Oh, no. That really is a, the actual sentence. Validate environments and dependencies before. Before using verification, before deploying the software. Before using the dependencies. Before usage, I guess. Yeah, usage. Yeah. The build environment sources and dependence must come from secure trusts. I think it's a valid recommendation. It's just a really bad statement. It's usage. Okay. Um, and on, on the first one, would that uh, would that uh, be uh, yeah the one that you're saying to delete there? Um, is that something that, for example? Um, I have my binary or my container image, and um, um, I have that on my artifact repository. And once that's deployed into production, I, I do some kind of like hash validation. Is that related to this first uh, recommendation? I, I uh, unfortunately I deleted it now. I'm more than happy to put it back. But uh, I, <laughs> I think I think that one was more uh, sort of post post instantiation of what you've actually done, just make sure that it's secure. So, so we run automated tests to make sure that you're happy with the security posture of what you just sent. Okay, so it's, it's, not, it's not just like a checksum of, of what's, what's deployed and what was generated by the source code. Uh, no, I think it's much broader and it's much broader than that. About yeah. like admission controls more sure. than that. Okay. I mean, I guess the way, the way that I'm thinking think, or was thinking of that one was like you've stood up your, um, it's like the power on self test, right? It's like you've stood up your software factory, um, you, you've, you've done, or your, your pipeline, you've done everything you can to make sure that you've secured that thing. But do you want to run a, a suite of tests against it to validate that uh, it is still stood up as you expect it to be stood up? 
you know, fire payloads at the thing, try to fire off certain uh, attacks against it to, to make sure that it is secure as you expected it to be. Not just check to make sure configuration files are set up, but, you know, can you connect to it via HTTP? Can you just manually insert some step or something? Yeah, you could even use formal methods to, hey, does this actually have this set of inputs or right. does, does it have go. metadata at all? Does that metadata okay. match what you expect? So, so now I've so deleted that, it, maybe I put it back. <laughs> so, so that would be more like a brief detection of your infrastructure as code. Right. I think I think it's more than that though, and, and yeah. I think it includes that, but it's more yeah. broad statement. Is that sure. I am I am I want to make sure that it um, I, I want to prove provide efficacy testing. I want to I want to pr prove that uh, some of the to to and and this point, you know, almost to the formal reasoning perspective. I know what these inputs are. I'm going to put these inputs in. I'm going to run this build or scan and I'm expecting it to show this output or I'm going to flat out try and um, you try and delete one of the stages it's supposed to be immutable so it shouldn't allow me to do that and just validate that I can't do uh, some of that sort of stuff your part in Toto okay. is giving you some of those things at every build stage right I think right. this is more uh, like runtime at the station of, of Providence. Well, this, yeah. in, in my mind, this was more just make sure it isn't broken, right? It's, you, you wouldn't run it all the time. It's just, you know, it, it's like, you know, you built, you built the house, you made sure you put the locks on the door and yeah. everything, but try the door after you're outside, right? Did you? Yeah. Great. It looks like there's a lock on it, but can you open the door? No. So it seems to me that's more like uh, testing your instant response plan and, and, and from uh, just an example there, but uh, it would be more related to something like chaos engineering, right? So break stuff and see how it behaves. It's closer to the chaos engineering. It's, it's closer to just, okay. just run a suite of tests against the thing to see if it really is secure. Isn't okay. it more like a regression testing? Like, Yeah, kind of. But it's security regression testing. It's like, you know, it's like if you think of an infrastructure, we should probably move on a bit, but think of infrastructure as code, right? You've got an S3 bucket. You know, I've written some Terraform to secure the S3 bucket and I can see it says, make sure that uh, it's encrypted and it's only, you can only connect to via HTTPS. But as a test, just try and connect to it via HTTP. Does it work? You know, that's what you really care about. And that would prove the efficacy of the controls we've just implemented. I mean, it, let's, it just let's come back to this one. But yeah, it's it's checking that in practice there are no deviations from what you think. Yeah. From what you did. I can I can put it back and put more verbiage into it. I'm also happy at deleting it. Okay. Happy to tag team on this one with you. So you sure. can go to first pass when I come after you could do it async or Yeah, sounds good to me. <laughs> so re add <laughs> and then uh Cool. Because there's some cool stuff you can do in there, actually. All uh, right. So a test each stage. What's your... How are these two different? We've we've merged them already, actually. They're they're oh, combined. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, this was that that was right. This was after, right? Cool. Oh, uh, you're still in the build pipelines. Can I go? I just noticed this control environments thing. Um, Which one? About uh, above the securing the build pipeline. You're going to delete that for now. Okay. Yep. Would you want, or do you need to keep it? Um, no, I don't need to keep it. I actually raised a concern about it in the original document. So. Um, hmm. I think we fixed it. <laughs> if this is kind uh, of objective to build repeatability, I would like to describe the section in detail in Appendix 1. John, I'm sure you have plenty of perspective on highly regulated environments. Uh, I don't know if like 
controlled environments is too ambiguous, but we would like to call this air gapped. And then we can talk about, well, reproducible builds are, are key there. Uh, also, well, people are not pulling, pulling things off the internet. So how do those things make it into the environment? And everything at that point, whatever goes into the, the repository in the air gapped environment should be strongly attested. A lot of things can be said about about that. There's there's so, several different dimensions, but should we spin it that way? I think we should actually, and I, I prefer the air gapped. So, so your your suggestion is to change the name of it to air gapped. Yeah, and as we well talked as... about air gap recommendations, which there's several, because you now have like intermediate repositories you you need to trust, and the artifacts in there. How can you tell they actually come from the from where they presumably come. And this is kind of opening up a can of worms here a little bit, but but I think it's a valid one. I like changing that to air gapped. Um, is there a list of additional recommendations? And I guess my question is who, who's, who's in a position right now to add those? Because I think that's really valid, right? If you air gapped environment, how, you know, the, um, you know, how do, how do you actually inject those, uh, that, that software? Oh, the it feels like It feels like at this time you really can't. Um, you, you have to like lift and shift your whole pipeline and build environments over to the air gap environment if you wanna, uh, make everything work well yeah well is that's not how is that how it works i mean um i i'm, I'm not that familiar with truly air gapped environments i guess that's probably one for um blake cole and perhaps yourself anders sure i can i can take initial step at it i i could benefit if there are additional threats to mitigate. So like, what what are the vectors for release tampering? Is that, is that like, what's the impact of compromised developer account credentials? Because we can say in air gap environments, only do things that have been signed and you can validate out of band and follow like automatic validation of, of those signatures. Feels almost, like a great topic for, for a Slack thread. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Some ideas there. But it also feels like um, a good rabbit hole, right? Because I think I just, no, I think that's a really good call, right? Do, do you yeah. want to have a shot at it and maybe um, I think Cole would be great to uh, to, to opine on that. I'd, I'd like to chip in or, or probably look at that. But if I put you down for for initial pass, Anders, and then we can, I'll follow up with Cole perhaps, totally. see if he's interested. Yeah, and thanks Nisha for drawing attention back at this item. I'm glad yeah. we were visited here. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Yeah, Cole might say just set up a mirror of like Docker Hub or <laughs> Artifactory. He's very pragmatic, which I like. So I'm gonna, yeah. try, I'm gonna need that. Hey, it's still egg apt. It's just an egg apt to get yeah. up, uh, Docker Hub. Yeah. Yeah, or use that that Amazon tool that that clones uh, connected environment to offline environments. I forget what it's called. But use teleport too. Teleport. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, shifting on a bit. So where were we before this? Were we down here? I think authentication roles, short lived workload certificates, secrets management, deployment, securing the artifacts themselves. Um, 
Is this in the wrong place? No, it's not. And securing the actual deployment, we're pretty light on securing deployment, but any thoughts? I think I agree with all of that, to be fair. Can you just scroll up a bit? Please? Sure, sure. Oh, actually, scroll down so that the text is up. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, that's the end that, of it. That is okay. it. Yeah, that's that is the oh, end. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was something more. Yeah. Since since we're yes. giving explicit project recommendations, should we also say use open policy agent, use Aspire? Um, not sure. That's an interesting one because I I think we've sort of use, slightly shied use. away from. Sorry, Magna. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, use container <clears throat> container signing or artifact signing, yeah. And then we provide, oh, here are some tools that do that, but point directly at at uh, our, like our tools as, as CNCF tools, I'm not sure. Um, they can use, they can have other options, right? And sometimes they prefer the enterprise version of that because of support and, and, and other things. Okay. So yeah. on. So let's talk categories. We can say you say policy engine for policy. Yeah, policy. exactly. Your so, an admission controller, right? So something like yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah, keep it in runtime attestation engine that also distributes credentials and connect as a PKI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you kind of yeah, disappear into madness, right? I know. I, how, how does this? How how did we do this in the uh, container security paper? Because we're in the middle of the CNCF, right? I mean, I, I think we should state the generic, but also reference these specific, especially within the CNCF, as like a first or identify this as a gap. But, but how, I'm interested in how it was been done in the other papers. Does anyone know? I think we can do whatever we think adds the most value to someone reading the paper. And like our view of the world is is very cloud native, right? Yeah. We have this reality of or like the reality around us is these are the things we see really close to us. Therefore, those are the ones we'd recommend. So we I, I think it's fair game to to call out explicit things because people read this thing is like, oh, conceptually, this all sounds great, but what tools should I be using? Yeah, totally. I think we need to draw the line between referring to a um, a, 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 um, a company specifically or a non-open source project perhaps, but um, right, I think that's reasonable. No. Yeah. We don't want to do what the CNCF tech raider did for secrets management and say, go use cert manager or go use our recommendation is to adopt vault but to explore cert manager or aws kms when those things right. are not even secret stores <laughs> right that's yeah wow yeah. really okay yeah oh, you <laughs> that haven't seen that, that happened one? i'll share the link yeah no i didn't wow I, okay. I have to go on the toc call the last one to try to get that retracted Wow, that's not that's not great. Okay. Uh, so so isn't it better to use the generic term and give the example, right? Like, or, uh, yeah. you know, it, 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 instead of giving a title, it it will look like that secret manager in you know, a mind map, right? Like people will think that it is just you know. Yeah, one and side. I, I I think that's what we're gonna do, right? So you know, use some form of artifact signing. It's probably not even the tough approach. It's probably notary, right? Or, or use, um, you know, use a schema for metadata. I'm not sure if we want yeah. well, to that's, suggest that's a, this, but that's a good distinction of of the nuance at play. That 
the update framework is a spec it's not a implementation yeah so it's good general advice to give follow the principles or the or the ideas this that this framework seeks to standardize yeah we could yeah. say use artifact signing approach that implements the, the update framework and it's not a explicit go use yeah. like we're still safe of the lives of no king makers yeah cool all right um i think i think that's reasonable i i will make a few of those notes i'll put that back into the slack and go and have a couple of first stabs at it. I think there's a bit of homework there, a few people too. Um, right, got a few minutes left. Or what I was gonna do then is to look at the actual, um, well, two things. One, go through and look at the assurance categories that are blank and make sure we can add them in. Um, I think two, I think Blake, myself, uh, and probably Richard are gonna just finish off some of the chewing on, on 20 to 40. I can then integrate the feedback from the different reviewers. Um, thanks for sending that through uh, yesterday. That's cool. But from what we talked about earlier, we don't really have, we haven't really gone through and done that single, uh, single voice uh, element of it. So what I'd sort of suggest is if we, we, do a lot, bunch of edits because I think I'll probably get everything I've just referred to done in like over the weekend. But then I think we're probably at the point where we need to lock it and then give it to someone to do the, um, the single voice voiceover. Do you think we're at that sort of point? I, uh, apart from uh, unders, there's a couple of little bits that you're gonna we're gonna have to add in add in there. But I I feel like it's closer. Yeah, uh, John. I mean, uh, just seeing the edits from today, I'm like, this is so much more readable. They're still not in a single voice yet, so so. Right. Yeah. On a, on a scale of zero zero to ten, what's the re readability score, Richard? Six. I'm at about a six at this point. It's it's at least you know I, I one of my notes was like when i got to that section it was like starting a new paper and now it actually feels like it works with the previous sections which is good it feels it feels like one cohesive paper um but yeah i uh it'd take a day but yeah <laughs> we are we are getting into the length and i i mean i get that we'll probably have derivative works that will be the condensed this is all you need to know uh you know but the ontology the supply yeah. chain ontology let it simmer i actually really like the the graphics emily made and like that whole section i think that that could be on its own i really do think it could be a standalone if you don't understand what build pipelines mean here take a take a minute so yeah hey someone has to submit a proposal to o'reilly might as well be you there we go uh but so John, um, in terms of in terms of the next steps, um, I mean, we have I think edit wise, we're mostly focused at this section with the the recommendations, right? We, I, Alex, uh, I guess we don't have we definitely we don't have Cole or uh, or Blake anymore. But the the preceding sections, do we need to go over that at all anymore? It, it feels very concrete now. This this whole area, there's a couple of the, recommendations. This yeah. yeah. I think with, between the four of us, we kind of hammered that yesterday. I'd say. Right. So it, it, for, for this section, it's really just these, these, these recommendations, make sure I, they're all sound. Yeah, exactly. And cool. I, I think too, I think it was Nisha's point. The reality is right at the bottom of the document, there are a couple, couple, you know, a couple of orphan things. I think these couple of things that could do with an owner. Yep. But, but, you know, I think in the next 15 minutes, if we just get the assurance category and risk category and everyone's happy with what those are, we'll add the feedback we just had in today. We can do with someone to, to uh, adopt these two sections and finish them. And then I think we need those three um, people to go through and just give it the once over and put it into a single voice. 
Cool. Yeah. And and if we don't get around these, we can we can have some text that conveys, hey, this is not an exhaustive list. These are some other considerations, and these become bullet items right. rather than like fully spelled out. Yep. There are other things you should also be thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. Who, to, so just to finish uh -oh. this up, then who, who's going to own the deep? Who wants to do the D bomb S bomb and who wants to do the sharing of S bombs? So it's basically D bomb. Any owner for that? I wonder if uh, it this whole D bomb thing is uh, mature enough to be recommended. I don't know who added that in. I also am curious. I don't. I don't know what a debomb is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna so, throw that out there. It's so, a, a digital we have a lot of in Toto. We have a lot of in Toto sprinkled throughout. And it, yeah, it does feel like there's there's one. It, it feels like a very. I, I saw that in a couple of the recommendations where it's like, oh, this is in Toto language that's being crept into general recommendations. No, it's it, it's actually not. But it, it it what it is 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 actually this one really. Um, it's the, sh or my view of it is, it's uh -huh. the sharing and exchanging of S bombs. D bomb is a mechanism of doing such. Okay. Um, there are other things available, and D bomb is is certainly fairly early in in my view. But if we are, I, I think this is reasonable because I don't know necessarily there's a particular solution for it. And maybe that's a gap, and we highlight it. But we have to have the ability to share the S bomb data securely. Yeah. And what's good about that is it's that's a generic recommendation, right? You you know we know what the word sharing and exchanging, we know what S bombs are. Organizations can figure this out how they see fit, right? If other tools emerge in the next couple of years for doing so. Right. We can even reference there's a couple of things going on, but but we do need someone to own that one. Anyone want to own and fill that one out? Uh, I guess I will. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Many, many thanks, Nisha. So I'll put you down for that one. Um, Do we want to throw D bomb in the glossary? Uh, That's probably a good idea because right now uh, there are a lot of uh, folks who are asking, "What is this D bomb?" So. Yep. D bomb's looking a little bit poorly as well. Actually, we probably need, sorry. The glass glossary needs, looks a bit poorly as well. But still. All right, cool. So we've got those two things. 12 uh, minutes. Sorry. I was curious, sorry. Hi, did you? Uh, yeah, I was curious about the bullet points under ensure clients can verify the freshness of files and there's a comment that they need to be converted into recommendations. They're basically about validating, you know, S-bombs in Toto, or metadata, admissions controllers, so on, uh, right there. Your clients can verify the freshness of files. Yeah, but, but I, the, the bullet points with the, uh, yeah. Those huh. do need to go somewhere. Yeah. Uh, oh, I haven't got down to this bit. Well, then, this is interesting. Are these. Why aren't these actually recommendations? Or are these I, recommendations? I, I, I don't know. Um, I would expect that, uh, you know, if anyone wanted to validate any of the supplemental artifacts, such as signatures and S-bombs, they would validate the signatures on the on these things. So I would expect that if anyone is creating an S-bomb along with an artifact, they would sign both the S-bomb and the artifact. Yeah. So I think these are, sorry. These are different. These, and this is probably what you're saying, Aditya, but these are not connected, right? They, they aren't connected. I think they're a leftover from when uh, the section was first kind of put together and we were thinking of what needs to go under securing deployments oh, yeah, absolutely in right. general. Uh, and also, if 
if we, I, I think I think this is similar to what Nisha was saying, but if if someone is using, if we've already made a recommendation that they need to use Intoto, they need to do, uh, you, you know, uh, create S forms. We may not need to go in detail about actually performing verification or validation, but maybe we could kind of combine all of them into one section saying perform whether a verification or validation workflows for all of the metadata you've generated so far. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think we better. can combine this with the previous one, right? Instead of ensure clients can perform verification of artifacts and metadata yeah. or something like that, they merge it like in the yeah. previous category. Yeah, that's probably right because that's exactly what you're doing, right? You're validating. That, that makes sense. Yeah. For I, I can I can only really speak to so in total verification workflow here and. We we do have a I, I can I can drop in a link to that particular one, but I don't know how we want to point people to the right places in general. Well, like uh, John said, the I I think that you know linking or uh, adding verification to any kind of signage recommendations is the way to go. I mean. The only reason you sign a thing is so the person receiving the thing can verify that you yeah. signed it. And then you don't, you can't really verify anything if it's not signed. Yeah. I, I think there's a bit of a little, little bit of increased verbiage that needs to go in there and we can delete those two, but good spot, right? Um, the, these are kind of orphaned. So, so we do need to update that one, unfortunately. Um, I, yeah, uh, I can, so, uh, I, I think, okay, sorry. I, I really don't want to make this very, uh, in total specific, but, uh, I, I do want to note that the recommendation there probably goes beyond just validating the signature on the metadata files because in total has its whole verification workflow as well, where the link and layout files are matched against each other. And Toto is a state of the art. And in the absence of that, we have nothing else. So you right. do need to drive the path towards that and exemplify it. Do you, do you want to take a go, Aditya, at uh, expanding upon this one? Uh, I can I can give it a shot. I think I, I, I okay. <laughs> do, you, do you want to take a look and, and we can just review it or change it or? What about this last one? A mission controller potentially audit only to start on this. Um, I'm not actually sure what that really means. Uh, I think we should get rid of that because uh, Kubernetes admission controllers is an implementation detail. If anyone wants to make an admission controller that, you know, does the verification for them, they can. Yep. Wait, are you saying that not everything cloud native is written in Go and deployed to Kubernetes? Is there, is there any world outside of that? <laughs> I'm being facetious. I, I was wondering in this in this uh, paper if we were gonna we were gonna acknowledge that. Um, okay. In Toto is written in Python. Go implementation. If you want, you can make a Go implementation. Oh, we uh, have one. There is one, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, and didn't didn't AWS rewrite Toth in Rust recently? I'm sorry, there's a oh yeah, yes, yeah, I saw that. That was quite cool. The Roth for bottle rocket. Yeah. John, you're talking about assurance being a a piece that's missing. Was that what, what we just covered, or is there another section on assurance? Um no, I, I think there is that uh, missing, but I think we can we can just add that further up at the, you mean the comments we had about the build pipeline? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I, I wonder if that's like a like a higher level section on its own, which is incorporating formal methods like SMP filters, automated reasoning, provable security. Um, kind of like to, to add like net new stuff. But. It's not really general guidance, is it? I, I can I can make the verbiage and, and we can figure out maybe where, where we put it. Okay. Get, get feedback on that maybe. Yeah. I, I don't think it is missing. It's just it's one of it it is an element of it, but I Yeah. Yeah. And, and the biggest challenge with any of that is well setting constraints to the scope of, of policy, right? Because it's like right. non polynomial. So by when will you like yeah you really need to constrain the, the problem and i think constraining it along the supply chain might be a way to go rather than yeah. trying to reason about all software yeah exactly otherwise you'll, you'll never end okay um i think we've got to the bottom of that we've updated the that list we haven't had time to go through the different assurance categories we've only got three minutes left what, what I'd suggest is maybe, um, does anyone want to have a go at it and uh, dedicate themselves to just adding uh, initial thoughts around the assurance categories and risk categories, and then add a comment back onto Slack for review? Any takers for that? We're, we're looking at, kind of, I think it's from a down here practically. Um, where is this building systems? Does, yeah. does everyone what, uh, know? Does everyone know like what makes something high over moderate? If we're going to take a stab at this, I may be sounding uh, silly here, but I don't even know what assurance and risk categories are. Where is it? I think it, we have a definition at the top of the paper. I think somewhere. Yes, it's in the top. I think Marina also raised this point in her review that she sent in. Um, but a, a, a similar point that I would make is I'm, I'm not sure reading through this of any situation where those are going to diverge from one another. So I'm wondering if there's any point in having those as two separate. I mean, I think it's, it's worth defining them as two separate things. But in our recommendations, I feel like they pretty much are always going to be the same. Um, so maybe we just put in, you know, one level and however whatever however we want to phrase that level um but you know put one thing in alex to that point should we just write a sentence here that all the recommendations below are either moderate or high and then we just get rid of the byline underneath underneath each of the items i, I think we did have one sentence that says there are no low <laughs> yeah I, I kind of agree with the risk and the assurance thing because it's, it's. I think it's useful to stating that there's a problem or oh, there's differences at the top, but actually, kind of, almost state a single one. But I, but I think, I think there are situations where we have moderate versus high. Certainly, when we get to those controlled environments, I'd be interested in actually to see if all of the highs are actually cor corralled effectively in the air-gapped environments. I don't know if that's actually no, it isn't right here, right? Well, oh, we could go. leave it to the discernment of the reader, but it looks a little bit of a pie chart to have for every single item, assurance categories, risk categories. Th that's what I'm saying. I think we just have one, but I think there is a difference between moderate and high. We just need to ensure we define that. Should we, should we have it at all? Do we have it at all? You're saying? Yeah. What, what if we remove, uh, the risk category and sorry, what's the other one? You scrolled. Assurance. Up. I think it's assurance. assurance. I think it was category. It looks it looks like great metadata for like a a companion 
file to check in on, on GitHub. But but what are we but what are we saying though? Because is it there is I guess if we I think we need some level. I, I, I agree we probably don't need two. Or from my view, I don't it gets lost really whether we need we need assurance and risk. So maybe just have one. But I think it's useful to have one of them to say it's moderate or high. Um, okay. You, you're saying it, you, you don't think there's value in that and that most people are just going to go for it? I think, I think even for the moderate ones, they are moderate slash high. And a lot of it is, well, we're trying to get people to improve their posture. So we want, yes, like you're going to have higher degrees of, of assurance. And like, we want you to know the risk that goes with it. But it's almost implicit. So I, it, I guess the, the one that jumps out to me is the rebuilding your libraries from source in that most people are probably not are not going to do that but in yes. the environments that are depending on what your definition is like highly secure and super super regulated and even then only the absolute top of the top yeah that's a great recommendation you definitely do that but if people read the paper and think wow the recommendation is we actually want to rebuild the source um for all of our libraries, that's that might give the wrong impression. Yeah. So, how about I I suggest the following, and I I volunteer to do it instead of having it assurance categories call and risk categories call. And I can collapse this into one sentence. Yep. Before the paragraph to say for this particular item, we want you to know that the assurance category is between moderate and high. And the risk categories are for such. It it solves yep. it from like a just looking at it and not yep. actually reading through. And we have a little bit more room at qualifying that. Yep. Uh, I'm good with that. What does okay. everyone else think? We might be splitting hairs here, but I think it's beneficial. Yeah, I inclined to agree. Hello, Andy. Have you been here all along? <laughs> uh, I came in bang on half past four. So I, I caught the latter half of, half of the discussion. Well, half see past you. my half hour. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. I'm not sure if it was a time zone issue or a, or a tardiness issue. We, we, we're, you're, you're an hour late and we're closing the meeting. Really? Yeah, I did it last oh, week. Don't feel oh, bad. Don't have it. <laughs> we had this discussion and... Uh, I told you about it. It's like I was an hour late for that meeting. And, I missed uh, you, security last week. Yeah, well, there you are. Same deal. This whole time zone thing is a killer. Yes, that was a slightly different answer to your question. Then <laughs> uh, I have been, I have been working away for the last hour, but just not on the call. It did occur to me as well. Uh, okay. The one constant is still beer o'clock for you. <laughs> there you go. That's all true. I don't feel as bad now. It's good. Safety in numbers. Um, good. I, I think that's that's a great idea, Anders. Yeah, that's cool. Um, we're a couple of minutes over, but I, th I think we've. I think this is really coming together. I think I think the the sort of um, focus really on twenty to forty made a big difference. I think we just need to collapse all that stuff in, and then um, we're in decent shape. What we what we didn't identify was who was going to go top to bottom with the single voice commentary. Does anyone want to take a, a shot at that? So we had Richard, Alex, and Marina on the hook for that. Uh, I can also, I, I'm wanting to do the same. Yeah, I'm wanting to do the same. I, I guess that the approach that was taken rather than single voice was just actually manually editing stuff, um, unless I misinterpreted that. It is. Right. I'll, I haven't done my review yet, so I will, I will go through with a more of an eye at single voice when I do it. Right, right. That's what I thought is some really, really good reviews and commentary um, that need to be factored in, but not as much just from a single 
uh, single person perspective. But yeah, cool. it's really about wordsmithing and yeah, giving it an editorial review. Yeah. Cool. All right. Same same reviews. Great. If people are up for that, and I'll certainly do that too. As as you yourself, and just great. We have we have Andy. We could use some like some of the Queen's Royal English incorporated in addition to your yours, John. Just so we meet the standard. Uh, I'm happy to represent Her Majesty in her absence. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I I've got a couple of book deadlines um, coming up soon, which is why I'm. Um, not instinctively jumping in, but I am happy to. Uh, I, I'm happy to be in there. Just um, phew, you understand what I'm trying to work my way yep. around. <laughs> yep, that'd be that'd be awesome, Andy. Thank you. And uh, if if we left it to you, the graphics would be all sorts of cats and massive amounts of uh, very cool animations. So if you just stick to the verbiage, that'd be awesome. Yeah, very good. Yes. Great. Okay, thank you. We're a little bit over, so apologies for that. But um, thanks very much for your time, and we'll we'll keep. I'll, I'll put notes in the Slack, and we'll take it from there. Don't forget Appendix One. I still don't have any container opinionated people to review that bit. Andy Martin, I you go. qualify. Boom. <laughs> One of those things. All right. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Andy. It's right at the bottom. Thanks for reviewing, Andy. Sure thing. Sorry, I missed your message the other week as well. Yep, I will get it. Okay. Thank you. See you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Good night. Thanks, everyone. See you later. John, you want to talk about KubeCon? Uh, and yeah. unfortunately, I've. I've got to jump to another call I'm supposed to be hosting, but I can certainly ping you back on Slack or. Okay. If, yep. And I know it's later on Friday for you if you want to talk early, no, I'll be late. early I'll be, Monday or whatever. I'll, I'll be on all for a while yet. No worries at all. Right. I'll be here the, for the rest of the day. Great. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. soon. Just bye. Um,